And Rory asks us, if Jesus paid for the sins of all men when he died, what sins are men paying for right now in hell? Well, the, that, what that, the answer to that question is basically the response that I, the answer that I gave earlier. There is a twofold aspect to, to the concept of reconciliation, what God did through Christ on the cross. There's an objective aspect where Jesus died on the cross. He paid the legal debt for sins. But there is still a moral debt that is owed, and God Himself places a condition on the application of the, that debt, on the application of the atonement to people, and that moral debt that is owed is repentance of sin and faith in Christ. And the Bible makes it clear, God Himself says that unless a person believes, even though the legal debt is paid, he still owes the moral debt, he refuses to pay it. Let me illustrate it the way John Davenant did, who signed at Dort. Davenant said, imagine a king who has people, men in his kingdom who are traitors. And so he arrests them and he throws them in jail and he puts an exorbitant price for to be paid for their release way beyond their means, not, not any way in heaven and earth they could possibly pay. But yet the son of the king in grace and mercy says to the father, the king, I will pay the penalty for these men and I will pay their penalty and on condition once their penalty is paid on condition of their swearing allegiance to me as their Lord and Master, then they are free to go. And so let's assume there are six men in that situation. And so the son pays the penalty due for all six. But three of the six refuse to swear allegiance to the son, so the king releases the other three, and he doesn't release those three. When the king does that, has he acted unjustly toward those three? And the answer is no, because the king himself had the right to set the condition upon which they would be released. And the condition was, number one, there's an atonement, there's penalty, the penalty is paid by the son, so the son pays the penalty, but they have to meet the condition of receiving that penalty, which is swearing allegiance to the son. And because they refuse to do that, the king is not unjust to keep them in prison even though an atonement price was paid for their sins. The, the question is operating on the commercial theory of the atonement that if, if the money is paid, then ipso facto the debt's paid, I can go free. That's how it works in commercial debt. That's not how it works in legal moral debt. And I think that's the best response to that question.